I'm Dee Dee Humanist and here on my channel, if you've never been here, I talk about all things related to being an ex-Christian because I used to be a Christian and now I'm no longer a Christian and I just talk about topics that are related to that change in my life. Uh, today, the topic that I want to discuss is what is it like to experience the collapse of your entire Christian worldview and how to cope with that when it happens. So if you're somebody who finds yourself questioning your Christian beliefs to the extent that you think you could possibly not believe anymore, this video may be helpful for you because I'm gonna detail out what I went through and some coping strategies and techniques that helped me get through that time. So depending on your degree of involvement and dedication to your beliefs, there are going to be various reactions that could happen. But based on conversations that I've had with other fellow ex-Christians, there does seem to be a common pattern that takes place. And it's something I experienced myself. Mine was fairly traumatic as I was heavily involved in Christianity. My beliefs really defined me. And disconnecting from all of that, like I said, is very traumatic and distressing. If this sounds like something that you may be facing at the moment, I just want to go over what you may face in the future. Here's what you may be facing, and here's some things I did to cope and get through that time. When you are going through this process, you may not realize that you're not going to be a Christian again. It can be pretty shocking to have that realization if you never wanted to to not be a Christian. One day you may realize, oh, I don't believe this anymore, but because it has shaped everything about you, it's really hard to let it go. So what tends to happen is your entire worldview and your entire structure, if you decide to face this, comes crashing down around you. I know for me, I couldn't even formulate into words what I was experiencing. I couldn't, I didn't know what was really going on. I just know that I didn't, that none of this made sense anymore. And I didn't know what to do with my life. I didn't know how to think about anything. I was just extremely at a loss. It was pretty scary. At first, when I was going through this whole collapse of my worldview, I had some very bad thoughts. It definitely got worse before it got better. Uh, I pretty much feel like I hit rock bottom after asking all my questions and realizing that I didn't believe anymore. I grew up with beliefs that you are worthless outside of Christ. So once I couldn't identify as Christian anymore, I was feeling worthless. I thought my life had no meaning. And if there's no meaning, does that mean I'm gonna fall into a deep depression and end things. I was like, well, now I'm going to hell whether I want to or not. I had self-esteem issues because of the whole, you know, being worthless apart from Christ. I didn't want to do anything unless it was furthering the kingdom of God. And now that whole concept of the Christian God was gone and I was conditioned to think that it was sinful and wrong to take any genuine interest in myself. Don't be too consumed with my physical appearance, sexuality, life goals, interest, anything like that. When I was a Christian, ultimately, I was only interested in things that could be used for evangelism or that were spiritual growth things in Christianity. And anything else was too prideful and self-involved. So I had a really hard time figuring out how to view myself outside of Christianity. So here's what I did when I was at rock bottom. There were two things. The first thing is that I immediately reached out to one of my coworkers. One of my coworkers was an open atheist. And when I first started working with him, he scared me and I thought he was in line with the devil. But as I started working with him more, I started to learn like how empathetic he was and which was really surprising to me about an atheist because I didn't really know much about atheists, but I didn't think they would be empathetic. When I was going through all this and this happened to me and I realized I was no longer a Christian anymore and I didn't know who to turn to or what to talk about, I went to him and we, we sat down and we had a very long lunch and I told him everything that I was thinking, everything that had happened to me, my change in perspective and how everything collapsed around me. He just listened to me and helped me think through things. And so I was really, really grateful for that. So finding somebody who you can talk to that's a safe space who will 
let you express where you're at is very important. You don't want to go to anybody who's going to try to make you feel bad about what you're going through. You need to find somebody who's going to listen to you and, and help you through this process without making you feel guilty about it or feel shame or whatever negative feelings about what you're going through. Second thing that I did, since nothing made sense to me anymore, I didn't know what to trust and what not to trust because my whole entire basis for trusting anything was based on the Bible and the Bible wasn't trustworthy anymore. I had no idea what to do. I remember looking outside my window one day. I looked outside and I saw trees and I remember people always talking about God's beauty. Like you can see God's beauty in nature. That's how we know God exists is because of all this stuff that he did. And I remember looking outside and thinking, all I see are trees. I know that trees grow in the ground and the sun helps in that process and water helps in that process. But I was assuming that God existed in this scenario. Yeah, I have to make an assumption. I can't verify that God created these trees. The only thing that I can verify is that these trees exist. I can test that. I had realized I could identify and test over and over again that things like that existed. Just using my five senses, I had to start working those critical thinking muscles and that's how I started doing it is with the five senses, grounding myself with my five senses. I just wanna say if you are experiencing this or you think you may be experiencing this, situation you could be a critical thinker in your life and you could have been a critical thinker as like a christian i definitely was but i didn't apply it to my faith at all that's the difference i made exceptions for my faith in my life but i applied my critical thinking to everything else so this was a transition from not doing that letting things go because it had to do with my faith and stepping into critical thinking mode now in all areas of my life even my most prized identity level beliefs and that was hard several years later it's definitely super super rewarding to go through this process but it's really hard when it's happening so those are two of the first things that i did when my entire worldview collapsed around me i had to do a lot of processing my old life and reframing what was going on in my past i mentally had to go back through every single situation I could ever remember about my Christian walk. Anything that I pointed to God's intervention or like miracles, and I had to think about the situation. So this is after I did my whole five senses grounding technique. I was looking through those scenarios and I was thinking, is there anything here that can easily be explained by natural occurrences? Things could have just happened. Nothing special stuck out about any of these situations, actually. I went back through all of them and I was like, okay, I was making a lot of assumptions and I was making connections to a lot of things that happened that didn't have any connection and made meaning out of them. I made the God connection when there doesn't necessarily have to be one. I was able to go back and see that every single thing in my life that happened could have happened without the intervention of a of the Christian God. And that was life changing for me. I had to actually mourn the death of loved ones. This one was hard. There were a couple people that passed away in my life when I was a Christian that I really cared about. And I didn't really mourn their deaths because I believed in an afterlife. I was sad that I wasn't gonna be with them now, but I was anticipating seeing them at some point in the future. I just completely bypassed a lot of the grieving process when it comes to people passing away. So I had to go through all of that again after I was seeing things differently. So I mourned the loss of one of my really good friends and realized that I was not gonna see her again, not based on my previous beliefs that wasn't gonna happen, but I was able to remember the beauty of experiencing life with her and to really value and cherish the time that I had 
with her and see it as a beautiful thing and and how lucky I am to come across somebody who who was like her and there won't be another person like her on this planet and um it's sad but it's also you know I, I couldn't I, I couldn't live in a fantasy land about it I had to I had to face it uh, not only did I have to mourn the death of people who had passed away, I had to mourn the death of myself. I had to mourn the death of my Christian life, the Christian Deborah. And that was really, really tough for me because I really liked the Christian Deborah. I liked being Christian Deborah. Um, it was really hard to let go of her, but I couldn't move forward without mourning the death of my old Christian life. So that's just sort of how I felt and what I was going through when I was having the collapse of my worldview happen. So how did I cope with this? I want to go over just a few things to maybe help you if you're going through this yourself. You're probably going to have to cope with a lot of anger. I was very angry and from People that I've talked to, they were also very angry at the fact that they couldn't be Christian anymore. Um, so like I said, it's very important to vent to someone who understands you and who isn't going to judge you. Someone who is safe to express your anger with. For me, okay, this is something that really helped me just get out my frustration is I would just watch videos about like, critiques on Christianity, like harsh critiques, because I was just so fed up with it and couldn't believe that I believed this stuff for so long. I also loved memes, like memes, help, memes helped me process what I was going through and helped me process like things that I was thinking. So I know people get onto me all the time on Facebook about posting Christian memes. I, I do it because, well, some of them are really funny, but then also because I know that that is a way to help people express their anger and their frustration with Christianity. I know it's such like a little thing, but I mean, there are so many memes that helped me through that time. Some other ways to help vent your frustrations or process what you're going through. Um, I would go on Reddit and post on like ex-Christian Reddit boards about what I was thinking. Twitter has a great community for ex-Christians. If you want to find me on Twitter and look at the people that I follow on Twitter, you can get a good idea of some people that you can follow in the ex-Christian community on Twitter. On Facebook, there is a recovering ex-Christians group that I am a part of that a lot of people go to for venting their frustrations and to talk about different things about Christianity that bothered them without feeling judged and also to feel supported. So there are those avenues to go to, you know, if you need to vent and you need to deal with that anger, it's going to be there and you need to kind of go straight through and, and tackle it. I think I spent about a year being angry. Anytime any Christian topic came up, I was angry, 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 angry. I could not talk to Christians about Christian topics. I just would not do it. Um, I kept it quiet that I wasn't a Christian anymore from people who knew me because I knew that it would just be a problem. And so I dealt with my anger for a year with Christianity before I started really talking to anybody about it. That wasn't a part of my healing or my grieving process of losing my faith. Okay, let's see. What are some other things? Okay, so some other things that you can do to help get through this process of losing your Christian worldview and building a new one. Identify victimless crimes from your previous beliefs. Once you no longer have a Christian framework, there's a lot of things that you probably do or that you avoid because it's said that they're wrong. Um, like cursing. Some of you non-fundamental types probably don't see that as a big deal, but like cursing, you're not hurting anybody by cursing. Blasphemy against God or against the Holy Spirit. I have said so many blasphemous, done so many sacrilegious things that I should have been hit by 10 lightning bolts by now, and I am still kicking. So if God exists, he doesn't care about blasphemy, <laughs> like not in the here and now, feel free to do that. Uh, you're not hurting anybody. There are a variety of healthy sexual behaviors that Christianity tries to make you feel bad about. 
they're not hurting anybody. Eating certain foods or drinking or dressing a certain way, these are all things that could have been in your religious framework that aren't causing anybody any harm when you take them out of the context of the Christian worldview. So that's one thing. And the other thing that you need to identify is beliefs that were unnecessarily harming you. If something was hurting your self-esteem, so for like somebody like me, not taking care of yourself properly because you were taught to put God first. If you were sacrificing of yourself to the point of exhaustion, that's something that was unnecessarily harming you. If you weren't taking any action except praying about things because you are waiting on God to act instead of you actually taking action yourself, that's something that is harming you. You're not owning your own life and making the decisions that you need to make for yourself. If your beliefs were causing thought stopping behaviors, which is when you don't continue thinking about something because you are told to stop at a certain point. So if it was frowned upon to ask questions after a certain point, that's harming your critical thinking abilities. So that's something you can identify if that was part of your religious beliefs. Repressing healthy sexual expression. If you were made to feel guilty about healthy sexual behaviors, like if you had purity culture as a part of your upbringing that is harmful. I'm actually going to do a whole video about Christianity and how fundamentalist Christianity is unnecessarily harmful and controlling of sexuality and our bodies. So that may be my next video, but I definitely want to talk about that a little bit because it is a problem for sure. Okay, it's a little dark back there, but uh, I feel like this makes the video a little bit better. So where were we? We were talking about identifying beliefs that were harmful for you. If you are a woman being taught to be polite, accommodating and submissive to the men in your life, that is a problem. If you were chastised for dressing or behaving in a certain way because you were a stumbling block for the men around you, that's not okay. It's blaming women for being a temptation to men. Men can control themselves. Like that's not your problem. That's not my problem. Dress how you want. Those are some of the things that I can think of off the top of my head that were harmful beliefs that are unnecessary. You don't need to abide by these ideas. So once you've identified the things that you don't need to follow from Christianity or that are harmful or they're just not applicable anymore, you need to start retraining yourself to not feel guilt and shame for not abiding by those ideas. You have to remember that you were trained maybe over years and years to feel guilty and that really takes some time and effort to undo. One of my favorite content creators, Jimmy Snow, when he started his YouTube channel, he, he discussed a lot of topics about being an ex-Mormon. In one of his videos, he talks about getting over religious guilt. He gives an example of a situation where you feel religious guilt, but you know that you shouldn't. And he gives practical tips for how to address that anytime you're feeling that way. So I'm gonna link that video in the comments. I have an, um, a couple more videos that I'm going to reference here and I'm gonna link those in the comments as well. Uh, another person, Julia Sweeney, I believe is her name. She is an ex-Catholic and she has a comedy special. It's a little old, but she has a comedy special called Letting Go of God. And this was very helpful for me because it, I think it's like an hour and a half special. It's pretty long, but it lays out like her entire process of leaving in a hilarious way. And even though I was an evangelical Christian, I related so much to her and her journey and her thoughts and how she went through her whole process of leaving. Um, so if you want to check that out, that was very therapeutic for me when I was leaving Christianity. Like I said, I'm going to link that in the comments. And then Mel Robbins has a TED Talk. It's called How to Stop Screwing Yourself Over, and it's not technically anything about religion. She talks about the likelihood of us being born in scientific terms, and I remember listening to this and thinking how special we are to be the people that we are in the time period, in the short time that we have here. Wow, how amazing. It just really made me rethink the whole idea about our life being worthless and meaningless. Basically, she helped me reframe how I thought about life, even though it wasn't a religious video. 
But ultimately, after, you know, all of this processing and stuff, I ultimately came to the conclusion that we all create our own meaning. So if you go and you watch that Mel Robbins video that I'm telling you about, it really taught me to treasure the time that I have now, that we have now, and to view myself and every other human being as a unique person that exists right now. And so, you know, what's the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to live. You're here one day and then you're gone the next. So enjoy it and make it the best you can for yourself and those around you. That's ultimately where I ended up. My process probably took, I mean, to be honest, I guess I'm always gonna be deconverting or deconstructing. There's always gonna be something that pops up in my life. It's like, oh yeah, that's a result of my Christian indoctrination that I grew up with. Man, I wish I didn't have to deal with that. But it becomes less and less as you get further away from, if you put in the work, if you put in the work and you don't avoid this situation, the further away you get from it, the less you think about it, the more well adjusted you become. So I hope this video is helpful for you. I hope that if you are going through, sorry about that. Ah, I was so close to finishing this video and that happened. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to say that I really hope this video is helpful for you. If you're going through this collapse of your Christian worldview, I'm really sorry that you have to go through this. But I want you to know that you're not alone and there's many, many of us who have gone through this and you're going to be okay and you're going to get through it and you're going to get out on the other side better than you are now. I promise you. I hope that is encouraging and I hope that you are able to take the information in this video and apply it to your life to help you through this process. So thank you all for joining me today and I will see you next time.